everybody, welcome back. And once again, my name is Pastor AJ de Villiers, and I have the privilege of sharing something from the Word of God with you once again. So let's close our eyes and we can have a word of prayer before we dive in to the Word of God. Father, we thank you that we have this privilege that you are God, Lord, that we can get to know you and that we can spend time with you, Father. And as we read and as we study, may your word stand out to us. May your word speak to our hearts. May your word impact our lives and protect us from the wiles of the devil. We hereby commit our lives into your hands and we pray this in your name alone. Amen. Have you ever felt that you're left alone? that you're, you're, you're trying to fight the battles of life on your own. You might be in a family, uh, you might be married or have children, but sometimes it feels like you're missing the point or you're fighting the whole time or, or you forever have to strive or struggle to get something right. Well, here's the thing. If we look at the life of Paul, we'll notice that Paul was struggling with many things in his life. He finds himself in jail, and he writes a letter. And it's interesting how he always wrote, or a lot of the times, he wrote out of jail to the churches. And this time, he writes this letter to the church of Ephesus. And we must realize that Paul was going through a challenging time at that time. And, and he, he's sitting aside in jail, frustrated because he cannot get out frustrated because he cannot minister, frustrated because he cannot get to the churches that he's been working with. And he sets out to write a letter. And this is probably one of my, my most favorite passages to look into. And, and I want us to go through the last few verses of Ephesians chapter 6. So turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to look at verse 10 to verse 18. And it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the gospel, with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith with you, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Now it's interesting because just after this, he asks for a, a prayer for him as Paul because he's struggling with things. And that he also speak boldly about the gospel. And then he concludes and he sends greetings to the church because he misses the church. But what interests me is what happens before these verses that we've just read. It's interesting because he closes this letter off with the armor of God so that the Lord can protect us from the wiles of the devil. And you'll notice that he says in verse 12, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So in other words, he's saying we're not fighting with our friend, flesh and blood, we're not fighting with our partner, with our husband, our wife, our children, our parents, our grandparents, our neighbors. We're not supposed to be fighting with them. But our fight lies where? Our fight lies with principalities, with powers, with the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness. So, so ladies and gentlemen, bear with me and think about this. The next time you're fighting with your, with your child, or with your husband or wife, realize that there might be something happening in the background, behind the scenes. 
And you might have to pause before you retaliate and argue and continue to push the conversation. Let's go a little bit back. We're going to come back to these, these six items or seven items. Let's go back to verse of, of chapter 5. And I, I just want to go through the summary of what it's actually saying. So chapter 5 speaks, it starts out, walk in love. So in other words, my relationships needs to be based on love. Then he says, walk in light. When you walk in light, it doesn't really matter what comes your way. You won't be ashamed with whatever is happening in your life. Then people can actually see who you are. Walk in wisdom that you can make solid decisions. And then the next section in chapter 5, verse 22, it starts to speak about marriage. It starts to be, speak about the relationship between husband and wife. And you'll notice then at the, the beginning of chapter 6, he starts and he focuses on the relationship between children and parents. And then, just before this concept of the armor of God, he looks at bond servants and masters, the relationship once again. So he spends a whole chapter and about nine verses focusing on relationships. And honestly, you can actually go further back in the letter of Ephesians, and you'll notice that he's speaking about relationships. He's speaking about overcoming the challenges that we face between each other. Because guess what? I am not an island on my own. I am living with people. I am actually going through life with people around me, and I have to understand how to deal with them and work with them and overcome the barriers that we, we face, the frustrations that we face, and that we can actually work together in life. And he concludes this, this letter. And I can see Paul sitting at his desk, if he had a desk, in jail, writing this letter, and he sees a Roman soldier stationed at the entrance to his his cell, if we can put it like that. And I can see he's been writing about relationships and how to, what they should look like, how they should overcome challenges, what the role is of each one in that relationship. And he comes to the end of this letter and he thinks, how can I sum it up? How can I put it together that people once again can take the gospel and make it Practical. Finally, my brethren, he says in verse 10 of chapter 6, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So he's, he's focusing on the children he's addressed. He's focusing on the parents he's addressed. He's focusing on the couple he's addressed and the bond servants and masters. And now he says, finally, brethren, all of you who I focused on, church, I need you to listen to what I'm saying. You have to be strong in the Lord. It's not in your own strength, because if you're going to be fighting with your partner or with your, your marriage spouse or, or your friend, guess what? You might not be strong in the Lord. And this hit me hard, because guess what? I'm human, and I fight. <laughs> And I have to realize, Lord, I need to surrender this over to you that I do not fight and that I remain strong in you and you can guide me through my relationships, through my friendships, and that my, my friendships with people, my relationships with people can become stronger because you're the center of my life. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The wiles of the devil, honestly, is there to destroy humanity. It's there to destroy relationships between husband and wife, parents and children, parents and parents, their parents, and also neighbors. And ultimately, to destroy the church, to destroy communities, that is what the devil truly actually has set out to do. And then ultimately, to destroy the relationship between us and God. Verse 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, so he says, therefore, because we are fighting not with each other, but with principalities and powers, therefore, don't focus on that fight. Focus on this. 
Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. So in other words, I have to equip myself that when I interact with someone that has done something that frustrates me or irritates me, I have to realize that I need to be strong in the Lord, and I should not react, but that I should present Jesus in that situation. The toothbrush might be in the wrong place at home. The children might have less, left things on the floor. Don't snap. Be strong in the Lord and show them that Jesus walks with you. Stand therefore having girded your waist with truth. So, so we, we're going to focus here and there's six items. The seventh item is something that actually sums up everything in the armor of God. The first three items is something that I need to put on. And this is technically where I have accepted this as being my foundation. That I've accepted this as being who I am permanently. The last three almost strengthens the first three. We're going to go through them. The first one is stand there for having girded your waist with truth. So in other words, put on that belt. Put on that belt of truth. And, and you'll notice that it speaks about truth. It's to keep us pure. What is the belt protecting? And I want the young people to realize that it's protecting your sexuality. Remember that we have to ensure that we stay true to what God has called us for. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. So in other words, put on the breastplate. So... So when I put on the breastplate, it's protecting my vital organs. It's keeping me alive. Remember, foundation is truth. Foundation is righteousness, the right doing before God. So once I have my truth on, once I have my righteousness on, I now go on to the next one, which says, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So in other words, put on those shoes, which is the preparation of the gospel of peace. Wherever you walk, Peace should go with you. Truth should go with you. Righteousness should go with you. Now, a Roman soldier back in the day would not get undressed out of these three things when they're at war. They would always need to be ready to go into war. Now, when it comes to our spiritual war that's taking place, we should always be ready to fight the devil. How do we do that? We have to be strong in the Lord. We have to realize that we're not fighting with flesh and blood, but that we're fighting with principalities and powers. And therefore, you put on truth, you put on righteousness, and you shod your feet with peace, that it can move you forward and people can see that Jesus Christ is alive. Those are the first three things. They're the foundation of your spiritual relationship with God and with humanity. We need to be truthful. We have to be righteous by right doing before God. And then we have to take our peace to the world. And you'll notice the last three, verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So in other words, you'll notice that the Roman soldier put on his belt, the, the breastplate, and then the shoes. He's now ready, but he firstly needs to bring on his protection, his offense, and his defense. So he picks up his shield, and the shields back then stood about one and a half, about 1.4, 1.5 meters high. Why? This was to protect the whole body of the Roman soldier. And if they were standing together in a team, in a squad, if we can call it like that, the whole squad would be protected. The whole squad would be able to stand together and create a dome which was impenetrable. Take up the shield, and they would tie that shield onto the, either their right or their left hand, depending on which hand they, they preferred. That means that this hand is no more available for a sword or for a helmet. It's there. Faith becomes part of their life. Faith becomes something that protects them from the wiles of the devil. Faith becomes something that helps them protect the ones that they love the most. Second to last, take the helmet of salvation 
Take the helmet of salvation. So pick up the helmet. Remember, this hand's now protecting with faith. Pick up the helmet of salvation and tie it on your face and think about it. What is the helmet protecting? The helmet's protecting your mind. The helmet is protecting your decisions. Have you decided to give your life to Jesus? It's salvation. I need to decide this. I have to make a decision to surrender my life to Jesus. Then the last one. So the helmet is on. And now we can pick up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now you'll notice the first three things said, having girded, having shod, having put on. But the last, one, last three says, take up. Taking the shield of faith, take the helmet of salvation, and then take the sword of the Spirit. So in other words, the first three was something that we have to gird. We have to put it on. It needs to be something that's permanent. But the last three is taking it up. Remember when a soldier goes to war, he would not get undressed out of his his uniform, shoes, pants, and shirt. But he would literally put down his sword next to him, have his shield close by, and take his helmet off. Every single morning, we should be picking up the sword We should be picking up the shield of faith, and we should be picking up the helmet of salvation. These three strengthen the first three. So in other words, faith, salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, strengthens truth, righteousness, and peace. But here's the the interesting thing. We can do all this every single day. We can ask God to protect us from the wiles of the devil. But if we do not pray continuously, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints, without prayer, these six items spiritually makes no sense. And thus, if we really want to build our relationships with our, with our spouse, with our partner, with our friend, with our parents, with our children, with our, with our masters or bosses or employees or em- employers or, or whoever, we have to ensure that we put on the armor of God. Equip yourself so that you can be protected from the wiles of the devil because the devil doesn't like the idea of you building relationships, especially with God. Remember, Jesus is the center point. It comes back to the concept that we have to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. For without Him, we can go nowhere. Without Him, we can do nothing. Without Him, we cannot overcome our challenges between our brothers and our sisters. So may God bless you as you head into this new week And may God bless you and keep you and help you understand that when there's a fight taking place, maybe you should pause, say a prayer, and ask the Lord to protect you from the wiles of the devil. May God keep you as you head into the rest of this day. Let's close our eyes and we can pray. Father, we thank you that we have this privilege of prayer, Lord, and that we can come to you and place our lives into your hands And as we surrender our lives over to you, Father, may you guide us, may you protect us, may you give us the wisdom and the knowledge to overcome the challenges that we face within our relationships, at home, in the workplace, and within the community. Help us to stand together, Lord, with our shields high so that the wiles of the devil does not come into our family, into our church, but that we will always stay strong in your might. We hereby commit our lives into your hands, Father, and we pray this in your name alone. Amen.